we could potentially be looking at one of the biggest opportunities in crypto in the last few years and it's becoming very obvious that bitcoin ordinals and bitcoin brc20s are not just a fad bitcoin is the most decentralized the biggest by market cap chain one of the most secure chains in the entire world so it's likely that ordinals are not going anywhere anytime soon. And when you look at it, the market cap for ordinals in comparison to Ethereum NFTs, we're gonna be focusing on ordinals in this video, but also BRC20s, the market cap for that, are minuscule in comparison to Ethereum NFTs and Ethereum tokens. Good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome back to Compound Interesting. In today's video, obviously, I want to be talking about ordinals. I went ahead and bought my first Bitcoin ordinal a couple of days ago, and it's gone up 2x. Now, it was only 0.0016 Bitcoin, so I made about $400 in the space of 200, two days, which isn't too bad. But uh, yeah, Bitcoin ordinals are really taking off right now, and I want to go through everything that I've learned in the last few days about Bitcoin ordinals, how you can d decide which ones to buy, which ones are good, and which are the, like, the lowest risk and highest upside Bitcoin ordinals. So let's go through all that in today's video. So first, how do you even go ahead and buy a Bitcoin ordinal? Well now, thanks to there's a multitude of wallets, when I made my original Bitcoin ordinal video, like it was just so complicated, it was such a hassle to go and be able to buy a Bitcoin ordinal. It was just way too complex too complicated so even I didn't buy one even though I made an entire video about Bitcoin ordinals I didn't even buy one two months ago and it probably would have been a good idea but it was just too much of a headache but now it's easy it's as easy as buying an Ethereum NFT really so the wallet that I'm using is called Unisat and I'll put the link in the description below for the wallet that I use but there's uh, different wallets but make sure I recommend you use the link that I put in the description if you want to do this because I did see some fake wallets out there that if you send Bitcoin to, it's probably a scam. So just be very careful always on anything in crypto. Make sure you're always on the right Twitter page, on the right website, and yeah, just triple check everything, obviously. Yeah, so back when I made that video about Bitcoin ordinals, people were still trading the ordinals on spreadsheets. There was no marketplace, but now you can just buy them on Magic Eden, one of the biggest NFT marketplaces. You can just buy them there with your wallet. Magic Eden, there's a little Bitcoin tab, and you'll see all the top collections just like you would with any other chain. So now, why would you go ahead and buy a Bitcoin ordinal? Like, is this just a fad? Aptos NFTs, they were a fad. They pumped for like a week or maybe a couple of days, but who fucking uses those chains? Like those chains are just kind of, you know, no, like I've never heard of Canto before. Aptos, yeah, bit of a hype behind it, but yeah, no one really uses that chain at the moment. But this is Bitcoin. And if you want to inscribe a Bitcoin ordinal, it's likely going to be inscribed for the next hundred years. Well, like Bitcoin is going, Bitcoin, if any cryptocurrency is going to survive the test of time, it's going to be Bitcoin. So if you want to put something on chain forever, probably Bitcoin ordinals are your best bet, even better than Ethereum NFTs. Now, the difference between an Ethereum NFT and a Bitcoin ordinal is that the data in a Bitcoin ordinal is actually inscribed on chain. So if you put a, a JPEG onto a Bitcoin or ordinal, if you inscribe it onto a Satoshi, that's how Bitcoin ordinals work, the actual JPEG is stored directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. The, there's a four megabyte limit where you can put data, whatever data, someone put an entire little video game of Doom, they inscribe that whole game onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Whereas with NFTs, it's just a, a token on top of Ethereum that links to a JPEG. So like, it's not as final as Bitcoin ordinals. It's not actually 100% on chain like with Bitcoin ordinals. So maybe Bitcoin ordinals are even better than Ethereum NFTs. And we are potentially extremely early still. Well, we're definitely extremely early to Bitcoin ordinals. But the reason being is that the general population on Bitcoin, like most Bitcoin Bitcoiners hate NFTs or a lot of Bitcoiners don't like NFTs and think they're stupid. So they're not gonna be early onto this train. And then a lot of Ethereum maxis who like NFTs don't like Bitcoin, so they're also not gonna be early to this revolution or to this new meta. And like I said, the market cap for Bitcoin NFTs or Bitcoin ordinals is still tiny. Like when you compare, like the market cap of Bitcoin is twice the size of the market cap of Ethereum, yet the market cap of the ordinals or the inscriptions on Bitcoin are like, you know, 
one thousandth the size of the market cap of Ethereum NFTs. Okay, so now we know where we can buy Bitcoin NFTs on Magic Eden, and now we know what wallet we can use to buy Bitcoin NFTs, Unisat or Xverse, but what Bitcoin NFTs are we gonna go ahead and buy? Let's start talking about that. So I think the lowest risk Bitcoin NFTs or Bitcoin ordinals or Bitcoin inscriptions, in my opinion, would like the lowest risk ones, because Bitcoin is like, if you're looking for an inscription or an ordinal that's still potentially going to be valuable in many years time, I'd say the lowest risk at the moment, because this is all so new. So there's no good projects on Bitcoin ordinals yet. Like with Ethereum NFTs, there's established blue chip projects that have been that have stood the test of time at least like a year or so like CryptoPunks for example has been around for four years they're likely to be valuable still in 10 years time but with Bitcoin ordinals there's all these collections dropped within the last few months so they haven't stood the test of time they don't have these crazy good teams they don't have huge companies and huge backers behind them so it's kind of hard to pick which JPEG is going to do well or last this uh, last the test of time however the lowest risk play potentially is the inscription numbers. So this just essentially means you could buy you can buy like the first one thousand inscriptions ever minted on the Bitcoin blockchain. You can buy into the first ten thousand or even the first one hundred thousand inscriptions ever. So you can think of this like the first ever NFTs minted on Ethereum, like the first ever one thousand NFTs. You can go ahead and buy the first one thousand ever Bitcoin ordinals. And if you want to buy one of them, they're priced at one Bitcoin. So pretty hefty price. If you want to buy one of the first 10,000 Bitcoin ordinals, it's a bit lower at 0.1 Bitcoin. So that kind of matches because there's 10 times more of them. So they're 10 times cheaper. But if you want to buy in the first 100,000 subscriptions or the first 100 ordinals ever, you can buy for 0.06, 0.006 Bitcoin. So that's only a few hundred dollars. So the nice thing about these low inscription numbers is there's no team that has to pump your bags. There's no extra narrative that has to happen. Like these are still gonna have the same narrative in five years time as they have today, as they have today, that they're just the low inscriptions. They're the very first inscriptions ever on the Bitcoin blockchain. And we can look at some of the stats for the sub 100K collection, because that's probably the one that's the cheapest and it's like at the moment it's cheaper than the sub 10k collection which is 0.1 bitcoin so you assume the sub 100k bitcoin would be 0.01 bitcoin but it's actually almost half that price at 0.006 and we can see that there's almost 70,000 owners lol there's actually 69,000 <laughs> but yeah 69,000 owners or 70,000 owners unique owners which means like 70% unique owners, which is a good sign generally when you see NFTs with a high unique owner count, like Bored Apes, I think, are like 65%, which is very high for Ethereum NFTs. And there's only 2.4% of these inscriptions are actually listed for sale. So 2.5%, pretty, pretty low. But now, if you want to go ahead and buy a JPEG, if you don't like want to just grab one of these random inscriptions, which could be absolutely anything, some weird JPEG, if you want to buy one that actually has a team behind it or has some uh, value outside of just a low inscription number, what are the good things to look for? So first, it actually costs a good bit of money to inscribe on the Bitcoin blockchain. And the higher the megabytes, or the higher the amount of data you want to scribe on the Bitcoin blockchain, the higher it's going to cost. So if you see a collection that has a very low resolution inscription or a very low resolution JPEG, that means they didn't pay very much to inscribe that. And that likely means that they're not really, like they don't have a huge amount of investment in their project. They're just kind of wanted to inscribe something and they wanted to just be as cheap as possible so they don't have much of an investment they don't it kind of shows that they don't really care as much however if you see a high resolution inscription project that means they are actually they actually paid a good bit of money to inscribe that collection and if they did spend a lot of money that means they're probably going to want to continue to grow that project and actually work on it to make it valuable so that, that would be one of the first things you should look for if you want to buy into a collection. You want to see how high is the resolution. If it looks like trash, 
probably not worth buying. Right now the biggest ordinal collection by market cap is this collection called Bitcoin Frogs. And I quite like the art. You can see that there is high resolution on this collection. And it with a bit of background on this collection, these were actually minted for free. So anyone could have minted this on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So it has a kind of a unique narrative. So it was minted on the Bitcoin Lightning Network and the people, the minters only had to pay the Lightning transaction fee. So they got to mint this for free and now they're worth almost 0 0.1 Bitcoin, which is like, what, three, three grand. So they got them for free and now they're worth three grand within a couple of months. So not too bad of a trade there if you manage to be early on Bitcoin frogs. So it does have a, a good narrative behind it. It was created on the Night Lightning Network, minted for free, has a low inscription number. So the lower the inscription number of a collection, the earlier it is, kind of the another good sign to see in a collection. And it has kind of the perfect number of ordinals or the perfect number for a collection, which on Ethereum NFTs has always been 10,000. So there's a, it's a 10,000 collection, a unique owner supply of 43%. So not perfect, but getting there. The next, project i will mention is actually the project that my first bitcoin ordinal that i ever bought is pingus <laughs> so here you can see my beautiful pingu that i bought for 0 0.0016 and now on a 2x so it's kind of nice when you manage to get these good trades in a bear market you don't get that very often in a bear market so it kind of shows that ordinals are still taking off there's still a bit of, a bit of heat behind them but this is a lower number collection, so 1,300 items, but a unique ownership of, you know, almost 700, so more than 50% unique owners, and only 16% listed, so not too bad. Now, I'm not telling you to go to go and buy these, but they are cooking a little bit, which is nice, but yeah, there's not a huge amount you can go off with these collections at this stage, like, do you like the art? This is kind of like early Ethereum NFTs. Is the art cool? Does it have good vibes? There's not a huge amount else. Now on Ethereum NFTs, you gotta have like, you know, something crazy unique and really out of this world and be shipping products and doing all this like crazy business stuff. But this is really early for Bitcoin ordinals. So right now the meta is just like, oh, does it look cool? Does it have good vibes? Does it have a good community? That's probably what's gonna do. What That's all you need right now for Bitcoin ordinals because it's so early still. The last collection I want to talk about is actually my first inscription. So I went ahead and minted this domain, Bitcoin domain, Emil.Bitcoin, that's my name. So I'm now the owner of Emil.Bitcoin and I have no idea if this is just, is it, this is going to be anything like Ethereum name service. We know that ENS on Ethereum is very popular for, you know, if you want to send someone a transaction, you can just send it to their Ethereum domain instead of like the long string of characters random characters you can send it to just emil.eth if i own that i don't unfortunately but uh i do now own emil.bitcoin and yeah it doesn't work like that yet but i'm hoping in the future it does so if you want to speculate potentially on some bitcoin domains i'll leave the link in the description it's still very cheap to inscribe a domain but i don't know if this that's going to be useful in the future whatsoever but i went ahead and just bought got it because it's so cheap still just as a comparison if we look at the biggest collection on bitcoin ordinals which is bitcoin frogs the collection i mentioned we can work out the market cap very easily so there's ten thousand of them and they're priced at about two thousand dollars each so they have a market cap of like 20 20 to 30 million dollars which is tiny because we know on like the biggest collection on ethereum the biggest collections have market caps in the billions like board apes like the total collection for yuga is like almost 10 billion dollars when when you factor in board apes mutant apes other deeds etc and the biggest collection on bitcoin ordinals is like 20 million dollars so maybe a hundred times smaller and this pingu's collection for example has a market cap of like let me work it out so this Pingu's collection has a market cap of $1 million, so absolutely tiny. So there is a lot of potential upside with Bitcoin ordinals, and over the next couple of years, if ordinals like become a thing, if ordinals become popular, continue growing in popularity, we could be extremely early to this narrative. Like No one is really, when you think about it, there's probably like 10,000 people 
buying Bitcoin ordinals right now. But when the next bull run comes, and if Bitcoin ordinals are a thing, like these early inscriptions and early and early successful Bitcoin ordinal projects could be like extreme cooks. But obviously this is highly speculative at the moment, so don't go crazy. I've put a very, very small amount of Bitcoin into Bitcoin ordinals at the at this time because we have no idea what projects are going to last this test of time, except maybe the low inscription numbers. That's probably the lowest risk bet. Everything else is, you know, complete gamble. But yeah, that's all we got for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Really, really appreciate you watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.